All right, so I looked up, I, I was uh, Googling mid axis dispensationalism, and you know, Google the search engine, like it'll automatically fill in the whatever, oh, yeah. and it, it automatically changes it to problems with mid axis dispensationalism. <laughs> yeah, it did. Uh -huh. it so I, I clicked on that, and then and then the first uh, link that shows up is from uh, gotquestions.org. You guys familiar with that? It's like mm -hmm. a pretty big Christian. Uh, Thing, but I wanted to go over some of the things that they say on mm -hmm. the little uh, page that it comes up with. Uh, what is mid acts dispensationalism? What is the grace movement, and, and is it biblical? Dispensationalism is a theological system that recognizes various ages or dispensations ordained by God to order the affairs of the world. Classic dispensationalism sees seven dispensationalists, dispensations, so they're, they're hitting the school field stuff, right? Starting with the age of innocence in the Garden of Eden and ending up with the age of the Millennial Kingdom, the current age called the Age of Grace or the Church Age is held by most dispensationalists to have begun in Acts 2. So this would be the Acts 2 dispensationalists, which is what most people who are dispensationalists kind of fall under, right? On the day of Pentecost. At that time, the Holy Spirit came upon the believers and empowered them to, the full, to fulfill the Great Commission, which is actually not quite true, right? I mean... It's kind of like, not really what that was about, but they, that's because they're they're imposing their the Great Commission is going on right, right somebody, now. Somebody, whoever wrote this, has a a, a viewpoint. There. Exactly, there yeah. is, they have an agenda, they didn't, they didn't a paradigm. Ask, I'm sure they didn't go around asking multiple. No, questions. you'll notice that that's what this is all about, and right. why I'm bringing this up because right. it's it's like I was talking to my buddy Phil, and he he was looking into uh, you know the critics of mid acts dispensationalism, which was a lot of times what people do when you try and share the. Grace message with them, mm -hmm. and and he's like, we, I noticed that, you know, it really is, and this is what I remember when I asked, uh, or it might have been Matt asked uh, John Versig Stegen the first time we went to the first conference in 2011 down south there about what are the common criticisms, and and it's all, and he said it, and and my my friend Phil kind of verified and substantiated that too is that. The, that they accuse us of things that we don't believe, right? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> right, and this is what basically this whole article is. Because a good reporter would say, okay, this is what they're saying about you, what say ye? Right, right. right. Me, right. Wrong. Then we, so then I can say So yeah, that's right. kind of like why I wanted to do this. I wanted to e even have the title of this video be Problems with mid acts Dispensationalism, so when now when they click on that automatic <laughs> fill-in, this video will come up on the front page. <laughs> So and so we can actually give the correct answer, not somebody's paradigm of what they think right. mid-acts dispensationalism or the grace movement is. Um, so anyway, so going on to what this uh, article says, however, mid-acts dispensationalism sees that event, talking about Acts two, as still part of the dispensation of law. So again, they're they're conflating us with Schofield seven different dispensation right. stuff. That's right. wrong. Right. The church in the first part of Acts was a Jewish congregation under Jewish rule not the church of the church age. According to mid dispensationalism, the church began with the ministry of the Apostle Paul, that's true, in either Acts 9, Paul's conversion, or Acts 13, Paul's first missionary journey. journey. It's, a, it's an apostle, not a missionary, by the way. That, that, that's right. uh, but again, this whole Acts 9, Acts 13, there's really, I, I don't think there's any Acts 13 or Acts 11. Really, that was something that kind of, when people are trying to, Kind of plant the flag back in the day with O'Hare and Stam and stuff. They're trying to, but really, you talk to anybody who identifies as a mid acts dispensationalism. It's Acts nine is when the church started, right? So again, they're kind of ignorant of what's going on here too. But anyway, classical dispensationalism sees biblical distinction between Israel and the church. Mid acts dispensationalism takes it further, separating the Jewish congregation in Acts one eight from the Gentile church, the body of Christ from then on. Now that's misleading too because they're acting like it ended or something where no the little flock continued until they died so even beyond acts 8 they're still there right. it's just two different groups going on there there's yeah. the body of christ during the time of transition right and it's yeah God the diminishing, diminishing as, as it's called right. in, in romans, romans right yeah. all right according to mid acts dispensationalists or dispensationalism or the grace movement the apostles peter james john and the rest were still operating under the old covenant in Acts 1 through 8. Now this is more imp imposing that, right? Because right. they, they are covenant theology, right? And they're, they're not understanding that not, nobody's under the new covenant yet, right? right. Uh, 
uh, anyway, and of course they weren't part of the New Covenant back then either because it hadn't showed up yet, and it still hasn't. Um, they were still dut dutifully keeping the law and still meeting as a Jewish body in Jerusalem. That is true. That's true. Peter and the other apostles preached repentance to Israel, but there was no church until Paul. Oh, that's not true. There's that's three different true. churches church? in the book. Yeah, right. church you're yeah. they, Jesus they, said, they on this rock church. I shall build my church. church. He's talking about the that's kingdom the church. church. right? That is Which church. they were part of that was added to, which was added to in, in the book of Acts. Right, right, exactly. So it was Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, Notice to the Gentiles. This comes down to not using the King James Bible that in these modern Bibles that change it to uh, apostle to, to the Gentiles. Like right? he just go there and then Peter goes over here. Yeah. Yep. Romans eleven thirteen. To whom the doctrine of the church and the doctrine of grace was revealed. It was only after Paul began to minister that the church actually began. Now that's going into this Acts thirteen thing probably is what they're saying. But no, the church began with Paul in me first, right? right. Uh, thus, the only parts of the New Testament that are applicable to believers today are the Pauline epistles. Uh, the rest of the Bible is written for Israel. Now, that's not necessarily true either. It's all for right. our learning, yeah. right? We just rightly divide. Rightly yeah. divide what applies and what, what doesn't. Applies, right. it's Put all it in its proper yeah. context. There are some other problems with mid-Acts dispensationalism. In particular, <clears throat> now this is where it starts getting pretty messed up. In particular, its views on salvation, water baptism, and the church's origin are based on misunderstandings of some points of scripture. Here are some of the difficulties inherent in the teaching that the church began with Paul. To Paul were revealed the, this, revealed the details of the church, which had been a mystery. <laughs> Just the details uh, in the Old Testament. And they're, they're citing Colossians 1, uh, 1 25 through 27. Mid-Acts dispensationalism wrongly assumes that Paul's revelation about the church equals the beginning of the church itself, but then they don't go on to explain that, uh, you know, I guess statement. you, they wouldn't, in me first, you know, the first Timothy chapter 1. Right. But. So Mid-Acts dispensationalism misinterprets Galatians 2.7. Uh, I, Paul, have been entrusted with the task of preaching, so this is all from a apostate Bible, or from a satanic Bible, but, uh, but you know, preaching the gospel to the uncircumcision uncircumcision, just as Peter had to the circumcised. They need to use their King James Bible. Right. The mid-Acts dispensationalist makes a distinction between a gospel of circumcision, well gee, that's because we re read it in the Bible where it actually <laughs> says that, I wonder why we make that distinction. Yeah. King James, yeah, yeah, use the Bible. taught by Peter and a gospel of uncircumcision taught by Paul. In <clears throat> reality, Paul is referring, in reality, Paul is referring to different audiences, not different Gospels. Oh, who, who, get, get yourself, who, wrote, who wrote this? Somebody, all who, has, somebody who reads, a, reads a modern Bible, obviously, and then is, is in error. The Jews whom Peter ministered to, now check this out, were saved by grace through faith, just as the Gentiles to whom Paul ministered. Wrong. Whoever wrote this, who Paul wrote this, my name's brother Ron Knight, call me, 916-514-3551. <laughs> That's crazy. Yep. That's yep. crazy. But you know, this is a thing that a lot of like even uh, independent fundamental Baptists they believe that it's grace I, throughout. I know. That, that there was never that the law was never. They necessary. don't make any distinction mm -hmm. with the but now the righteous of God without the laws manifest. Romans, Romans three twenty one. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So, so uh, mid Acts dispensationalism or the grace movement denies the need for water baptism for believers, thus ignoring Jesus's command in Matthew twenty eight nineteen. <laughs> All right, well, so if it's a command, well, here, let me, I'll, I'll reference that again, because okay, it'll be apt later on here. They exclude water baptism on the basis of the baptism of the Spirit, which occurs at salvation, and listen to this, has replaced water baptism, as if before it was supposed to be for the body of Christ, and then it replaced, you know, that's some error, too. Right. They're not really understanding that, no, water baptism was never, never for the body of Christ. Of the, our one baptism was the, always the Spirit baptism. Yeah. They never replaced anything. No, so, no. Anyway. So mid-Acts dispensationalism overlooks the fact that Gentiles were part of the early church before Paul was converted because of proselytes. They're not understanding those are still right, Jews. Hello. Still Jews yeah. Acts 2, 10 through 11 makes it clear that the crowd listening to Peter preach on the day of Pentecost includes Gentile proselytes to Ju Judaism. It's not the same as what Paul's talking about when he says Jew and Gentile. 
proselytes are still under that Jewish law. Yeah, they are. Yeah, exactly. And Acts 8, yeah. right? That's why they're called proselytes. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> and Acts 8 shows how Samaritans. This clown who wrote this stuff. They should have called me, man. Well, this is, but you know, this is. This I think is, it's the guy who writes Desiring God, that clown. But what comes down to is that this is kind of the whole thing about mainstream, mainline Christianity, yeah, is that question. it's representative of what we're reading here. Yeah. And Acts 8 shows how Samaritans and, and an Ethiopian were baptized into Christ before Paul ever started preaching the doctrine of the Church of, Gra of Grace. Again, the proselytes. Thus, there was a joint church body of Jews and Gentiles before Paul began his ministry. No. The body of Christ didn't exist before the It was hidden God before the foundation of the and world. And again, those Jews are proselyte Jews. That they're doesn't part, mean that it's Jew and Gentile in right. body. Part yeah. Yeah. They're still Jews. Most importantly, now check this out. Mid-Acts dispensationalism or the grace movement claims that there are different Gospels. That's true. Gospel means good news, glad tidings, right? right? right. One taught by Peter and one taught by Paul. This is true. But it says, this completely opposes biblical teaching. And then they cite Galatians 1, 6, and 7, right? Who removed you from a from right. him, Paul being the him that yeah. preached Paul the gospel. Paul talking about his gospel. His gospel, yeah. Gospel and, God. yeah. and yeah. lead, and it, you know, it talks about in Galatians 4, excludes you, right, from Paul's gospel. Anyway, and leads oh, to the man, I, idea, bad, yeah, and leads bad. to the idea, check this out, and leads to the idea <coughs> of a works-based <laughs> salvation. Now this is really sketchy how they do this. Yeah. Uh, the Old Testament and the first part of the New Testament does not teach salvation by works. The Jews and Gentiles are not saved a different way from the Gentiles and the Kai. So what they're saying is that if you believe in mid dispensationalism that produces the idea of a works-based salvation, sure, outside of the dispensation of grace, right. before not, Paul... Not Doing but that's not what this would lead you to believe. This right. this kind of is, is making it say like these guys. Like us, we'd have been like, no, we don't believe. We can right. See Somebody who's just yeah. reading this would just kind of read this and go, oh, those guys preach a work work based salvation, thinking that that's for people today. Yeah. You know, that's why it's shady. And and again, all right, well, if you guys are so big about that, then what's this thing about Jesus' command in twenty eight nineteen to baptize? What if you don't do that? Why even do that if it's if yeah. there's no works? I go so far as to say that uh, Mark sixteen. Where he says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yep. That verse is telling you, if you're not, you won't be. And could, because in Israel's program, it's faith and works. Yep. You know? yep. Just like James talks about. Uh, so, mid-acts dispensationalism is opposed to several elements of orthodoxy. Alright, well, <laughs> Amen. orthodoxy traditionally throughout time has been the Catholic Church. Yep. So, yep. are you guys in that same boat here? You know, denominational Protestants, whoever wrote this? The downplaying of half of the New Testament, now we don't downplay, that's, again, that's We don't downplay anything no. yeah, in, the scriptures. in its unwarranted exclusion of early Jewish believers from the body of Christ, its disregard of water baptism, again, we don't disregard it, we just put it in its proper yeah, place. I, I, I know the value of water baptism, I just know where, where it applies. Yeah. Yeah. And its allowance for a faith plus works gospel make the grace movement an unbiblical view. So again, they're trying to say, they're trying to trick people into saying, thinking that we're saying today that you right. need works. We're saying no in time past By the you way, need works. Yeah, no good grace preacher will ever teach that that is what, that some uh, faith plus work salvation is what God requires. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, you can't say the same about the denominationalists. The Arminians and the, and the Calvinists, they both do produce the preach works. The, the Arminians say if you're not performing, then you might not be saved, or you have false conversion, or you or you, uh, you gave up your salvation, right? And then the Calvinists will say, if you're not performing, then you, I guess you weren't part of the elect after all, even though you believe, right. and you're doomed. That's right. Yeah. So, so again, this is this is what's happening with mid-axe dispensationalism on the web, so it'll be nice to put this out here and yeah. show people that... See, that, that thing is not written by a mid-axe dispensationalist. Of course not. It's written by... Of course we know that. What it's written by is, you know, one of these... I, I wrote website. that. I know who I'm really on night. Call me. Be a, be a, be a real <laughs> jerk. Just call me and ask me if this is what we believe and give me a chance to I'll, say I'll, no. I'll, I'll post and put your name on there. How, interesting, it how interesting is it that somebody's going to write an article and I have clearly not talked to somebody who who is what they're writing yeah, about? Yeah, and, and say, hey, here is this <laughs> what you guys believe? No. completely misrepresenting well, what, what do you what believe this? Yeah. They're on purpose. They're on purpose deceiving. Well, sure. Because they really are not interested in hearing what you teach. Is they, 
anti what we believe. Yeah, they basically they're not, they get an agenda. Yeah. So that people yeah. will not follow these right. things because they don't want to be labeled as, you know, teaching uh, they don't gospel just of a, another uh, kind. Like, like a journalist view, like, okay, I, I, I'm not biased either way. I just want what the facts are. They, their, their agenda is don't listen to Pauline dispensationalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, every, and, and, and with the stuff they say is, is untrue. All you have to do is, at, what would be fair is you say, <clears throat> that person say to someone like me says, is this what you guys believe? No. What do you believe? And then you tell them. That's being fair. That's what the point was, of this video. What, exactly. was, what was the name of that question that they asked on? Got questions. What is mid acts dispensationalism? Why is the grace movement? What is the grace movement and is it biblical? Can I tell you something? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it just be nice if, if that's the question to actually have someone who is part of uh, mid acts poly dispensationalism <laughs> answer the question? Yeah. Not no. just somebody I, I've who's been against to, I've been to that crazy. site many times and posted a thing some number of mm -hmm. times. It's run by all Calvinists. I know what. what it, I know. Oh, interesting. I, I knew it was one of the two. I, I knew. I know it's all. So, Calvinists. so that being it's said, how, the, the how would you how would you answer that? What is mid acts dispensationalism? What is the grace movement, and is it biblical? What is mid acts dispensationalism? Mid acts dispensationalism. What uh, as as a mid acts appalling mid acts dispensationalism? I and we believe that the. Dispense, dispensationalism is a word four times in the King James Bible. We believe that the dispensation of the grace of God began with the salvation of Saul of Tarsus in Acts 9, who is also called the Apostle Paul. We believe that what God is doing today is the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians 3, Colossians 1. And that God has ushered in a new age where he's saving mankind by God's grace through that person's faith in the blood of Jesus Christ alone, no works. Before Paul is saved, before the dispensation of grace began, God wasn't dealing with mankind on a grace through faith only way. It was God's grace through faith plus works. God is always gracious. He was gracious to Noah. But he never had a whole entire dispensation of grace where he saved a person from, from the moment they trusted Christ forever. That's why it's grace. You can't lose your salvation. So Paul, uh, mid acts dispensationalism means we believe that the dispensation of the grace of God, the current age where he's saving mankind by grace through faith plus no works, began with the Apostle Paul in Acts 9. Okay? So instead of calling it mid acts to confuse Acts 9, Acts 11, Acts 13, I would say Acts 9 dispensationalist because the church began with the Apostle Paul in Acts 9. Okay, go ahead. And it is biblical. Yes, that's from Acts chapter 9. It's in the scripture. Okay. Uh, and by the way, 1 Timothy 1, verse 15 and 16, Paul says, In me first, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, Jesus Christ uh, showed forth all long suffering. In 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16, Paul says, I am chief, which is front of the line, I am first. I, my question to people who don't believe the church, the body of Christ, began in Acts 9, what was Paul first in? He was the first person God dealt with in that way. Therefore, began the dispensation of grace, because he was saved by God's grace through his faith in Jesus Christ, no works. All right, what's the second, second question? Uh, what, is the, uh, what, what is the grace movement? It's not a movement. It's the grace message. It's Paul's message. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Go to Acts chapter 20, verse 20. I hate when people call it the grace movement. I, I, don't, I hate when Pauline dispensations call it the grace movement. It's not a movement. It's a message. A movement is like it just kind of swept in and kind of going to go out. No, no, no. It began, a message, a ministry began. Look at, uh, in Acts 9. Look at Acts chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 24. Just show, show people the verse. 20, verse 24. Paul writes, but none of the uh, Paul, Luke writes about what Paul says. But none of these things move me. Speaking of his uh, bonds and afflictions, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So there's no grace movement. It's a grace ministry given to the apostle Paul. Okay. Uh, what was what, what else about Ephesians that? five one? Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, right? Yes, dear unto God. It's the same thing. Yeah. Um, 
What was the other part of that grace movement question? And then finally, is it biblical, which we can already yes. address. Yes, <laughs> all these are from the, the verses. Right. And for everybody out there who sees this, because you're going to get the problem with dispensationalism, since that's going to pop up, my name is Brother Ron Knight from North Cal Great, Northern California Grace Fellowship near Sacramento, California. My phone number is 916-514-3551. You can go to YouTube, NorCal Grace. Contact us there. I'm a real Pauline dispensationalist, not some phony who wrote the, the, the thing. We're here, right here, to answer any questions you have about Pauline dispensationalism. Okay? All right. Thank you.